And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, Donald Trump on Long Island in New York. Oh, my old stomping grounds uh, for a massive rally. Supporters, they waited as long as 24 hours to get a spot inside the arena. Reports are anywhere from 60 to 80,000 people wanted to get in. The arena does not hold that many. Bad news for Democrats in New York who are facing an increasingly competitive political landscape, especially in Long Island. And meanwhile, more bad news for Democrats nationwide. Enthusiasm for Kamala Harris is collapsing. Take a look. What was really incredible is in every single restaurant of the people willing to talk to us, we could only find one Harris supporter in mm. every restaurant. And we left no stone unturned. I approached every single huh. person, except for this one guy who I think had too many drinks at the bar. <laughs> but people are really excited about Trump. What you just saw is now backed up by a lot of polls. Kamala Harris is 25 points underwater among independents, according to the latest Gallup poll. In the all-important swing state, I guess, of Georgia, we can now call it. Kamala is down by three points to Donald Trump. A new poll released this morning from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. That's not all. Two internal polls conducted by the Teamsters Union found that nearly 60 percent of rank-and-file members they support Donald Trump. Now, here's the interesting part. Today, the union uh, leadership decided not to endorse any candidate. Frankly, to me, that's a slap in the face to the rank and file. And frankly, Teamsters leadership, they need to wise up and realize the Democratic Party is the party of coastal elites and the party of regulations, you know, like EV mandates that uh, cost Ford Motor Company four and a half billion dollars to make cars that their customers didn't want, cars that were already being made by companies like Tesla. And that crushes high paying career union jobs. And Republicans are the party of now hardworking men and women the people that make this country great. But this is the first time in nearly three decades that the Teamsters declined to endorse the Democrat that is running for president. So I guess that's progress, but they need to be in sync with their rank and file. Keep in mind, the Teamsters Union has a huge presence in Michigan, in Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Kamala's troubles, they don't end there. Today, for whatever reason, she decided to resurrect one of her favorite word salads about the children in the community who are children of the community that live in the community. Take a look. I grew up understanding the children of the community are the children of the community. And they live in the community and everything. Kamala was speaking at an event for the Congressional Hispanic Cau uh, Caucus. Oh, naturally, the vice president adopting, well, Hillary Clinton's old model of bizarre new accents uh, when she is in front of different crowds. Take a look. Oh, it's good to see so many friends. Um, I love you back. If you kind of keep track of these things, this is Kamala's fifth or sixth new little accent on the campaign. You decide. Hello to all my divine nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> and my soror. <laughs> you better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. You all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. Let's just get through the next 64 days. How about <laughs> and yet today, extremist test book bans. Book bans of this year of our work, 2024. The courts are going to handle that. We're going to beat them in November. And I will tell you, when we get this done together, my friend, do I see people testifying? <laughs> Can I get a witness? The plan. And then the environment is such that we're expected to defend the plan. Apparently, Kamala is now trying to mirror Hillary Clinton. I don't feel in no ways tired, but it's just never, you know, ending. It's a, her ever changing accent. And nearly all of Kamala Harris's long held beliefs, uh, they are radical, they are left wing. They're now suddenly changing too, at least since she has become the presumptive nominee. Now, that's what she wants you to believe and America to believe. At the debate, she even claimed to be a, a proud gun owner, and she packs her guns, she said. And she would never come for anyone's firearms, she claimed. But as San Francisco's DA, Kamala, well, she bragged that she could send authorities into your home at any legal gun owner 
inspect their firearms and seize them if necessary. Wow. On top of a mandatory gun buyback. Take a look. This is about just basically saying that we're going to res require responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community. And just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not going to walk into that home and check to see if you're being responsible and safe in the way you conduct your affairs. So we're supposed to believe that the person you heard right there is going to uphold and protect our Second Amendment freedoms uh, a few years later? As a presidential candidate, just a couple years ago, she called for that mandatory gun buyback. Some of us may call it confiscation. Uh, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Now, she co-sponsored the $93 trillion Green New Deal, pledged to eliminate the filibuster to pass it. That would end capitalism as we know it. She co-sponsored the socialist government health care for all bill. How's the post office working for you? How's keep your doctor, keep your plan and save money working for you? And isn't Medicare and Social Security headed towards insolvency? Don't forget, she also supported a ban on private health insurance in that bill, repeatedly called for a total ban on fracking and offshore drilling. She also called on the government to reduce America's red meat consumption and advocated for a ban on plastic straws, in case she thought you forgot. She mocked Donald Trump's border wall, called it a medieval vanity project, said that illegal immigration should be decriminalized. And she has acted as such as your borders are uh, and is offering illegal immigrants that come to this country free housing, health care, education, and, in case you don't know, free sex change operations and amnesty, or as she likes to say, a path to earn citizenship. She also planned to get rid of ICE and said that public safety needs to be reimagined with fewer police. She even promoted that bail fund in Minnesota to get violent criminals and rioters out of jail four days after Minneapolis police precinct was burned to the ground. And then she called on the rioters in the summer of 2020 uh, not to stop rioting. They're not going to stop. They shouldn't stop. I thought we would refer to that as an insurrection, in case Liz Cheney's watching. Now, Kamala Harris is not your typical Democrat. She is a far-left, radical Marxist whose beliefs, you know, are absolutely out of touch with the mainstream. They are extreme, radical, and frankly, if ever implemented, uh, dangerous. You know, and then she chooses a very weird, China-obsessed, left-wing nut job to be her running mate. Now, maybe this is why she, quote, avoids getting too detailed when she battles Trump, according to The Hill, or why she has done zero press conferences, no town halls since her coronation, or why she almost hardly ever sits down with reporters. Take a look at this statistic. Joe Biden, he had to hide in his basement and, you know, hang out at the beach. He was exhausted. He had a reason, at least. He was suffering from significant cognitive decline, and he was very old. And, by the way, he took more questions in the last two months of his failed campaign than Kamala Harris has taken during her entire run for president. If Kamala is unable, unwilling to even talk to the Democratic cheerleaders in the state-run media mob, how on earth would she ever be able to confront President Xi, uh, Vladimir Putin, the mullahs of Iran, Kim Jong-un? Apparently, that is of no concern to, speaking of our old friend Liz Cheney, she is so deeply infected with Trump derangement syndrome. She has seemingly abandoned all of her conservative beliefs, if, you ever, if she ever had them in, in fact. Uh, she's even campaigning against Ted Cruz in Texas, driven by nothing but hatred, resentment, spite. The Cheneys now want socialists in charge of your federal government. But if you think Liz Cheney's Trump derangement syndrome is bad, well, you know, think again. And by the way, uh, didn't they refer to her father as Darth Vader? Didn't they want her father tried for war crimes? Uh, didn't they go after her father for Halliburton and the monies that he made there? Anyway, look at this poll. 17 percent of Americans think the country would be better off if Donald Trump were killed during the two assassination attempts. Now look at this statistic. Of that uh, 28 percent of Democrats, uh, would think the country would be better off if Donald Trump were killed. These are really ugly, sick, 
twisted times. This is all a direct result of nonstop smear, slander, besmirchment, the weaponization of top government agencies, lies, false caricatures that they have created, especially in the state-run media mob of all things Donald Trump, and their unwillingness to vet in any way imaginable Kamala Harris. And apparently, by the way, the mullahs in Iran, they are also dead set against Donald Trump having another term. Why, why, would, you, why would you go against Kamala Harris and Joe Biden when they're the ones that turned a blind eye towards sanctions and allowed them to make hundreds of billions of dollars that they're using to fight their proxy wars around the world and their battle against Israel uh, and give waivers, sanction waivers, that gave them $10 billion-plus payments? and even offered $6 billion themselves as a hostage payment. Now, the Islamic Republic, remember, you might recall the story, they hacked the Trump campaign. And then what did they do with that sensitive material? Well, they sent it to the Biden campaign. And yet the left is largely silent about this foreign election interference. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.